evening time, and quite frankly, an out-of-the-way location for lots of interest in people. I hope the panel takes our presence here as a testament to our commitment, and you keep that in mind as you listen to us. I'll be honest, I'm having a little sense of deja vu here. Most of us have done this before, and we're painfully aware that this listening tool tour is meant only to placate us. Many of us were here when John King pretended to listen to us. We weren't soothed then, and we hardly expect to be soothed now. Quite honestly, the State Ed Department has a reputation for not listening. You really want to know how the people in the state feel about Common Core? Anti-Common Core websites have flooded the internet. Hundreds of thousands of letters, emails, and internet posts have been sent and shared. Newspapers are thick with Common Core articles and discussions. Board of Ed meetings are consumed by Common Core. Our state legislators have been inundated by parents and teachers. Governor Cuomo has heard us loud and clear. And if that's not enough, more than 200,000 students voice their objection to Common Core and high stakes testing when they refused last year's state math and ELA test. And that number is just going to keep climbing. We yes. are here so you know we are not going away. We are not intimidated by obstacles or tactics. Listen to us, really listen to us, and respond to our concerns, rather than suggest that we just don't understand or that better PR would somehow make this more palatable. We want our local schools back. We want our children to love school again. We want age-appropriate standards and an environment in which the child is more important than the bubble sheet. We want standards that respect our children and their childhood, standards that are tested and proven. When I ask my region for statistically significant evidence to corroborate his claim that the standards work, I do not want to hear him tell me that his friends like it, as he did two weeks ago at a public forum. We want a curriculum that inspires our children, not one which kills the joy of learning or squashes children in eight intellectual curiosity. We want a classroom filled with magic and wonder, with an understanding that they are, after all, children, and not robots that must blindly comply without thought or feeling. There are no do-overs for our children. I'm also here because I believe in second chances. This is your second chance to listen to us, your second chance to change the course of this failed reform, to protect our children, and to stand up for them and for what's right your second chance to put our children ahead of politics. Make the most of this second chance. Good evening. My name is Elizabeth Lynch. I retired in June after a 26-year career in public education. I'm currently a doctoral candidate, and as a result of over six years of ongoing research for my dissertation, I'm well aware of the origin and the history of the education and reform initiatives, as well as the players in their 